people with young kids, it's not great to bring young kids out, but we're really excited. I mean, it's sad we have to come out and rally, but we are happy with the turnout and happy with all these beautiful people. Some of them have rallied for life for many, many years. So yeah, we're happy. Yeah. The Palaszczuk Labor government's draconian termination of pregnancy bill ignores the rights of newborn, does not provide adequate protections or look after women's health. It is bad for Queensland. It is bad for the rights of the unborn. It's bad for women. It's bad for fathers. It's bad for families. And it needs to be voted down. I'm standing with those people who are saying Anastasia Palaszczuk needs to listen to Queenslanders. The committee process was a farce. The Queensland Law Reform Commission process was biased and unbalanced. And we need, as a compassionate and just society, to look after not only the unborn, but also the true welfare rights of women and to provide adequate protections for all Queenslanders. I represent the, uh, the Nurses Professional Association of Queensland. The Queensland Nurses Union actually sponsors of this particular legislation and we're opposed not so much on the, on the social grounds because that's not our gig, but we're very concerned about the effect on nurses that this legislation will have, not just on the pro-life but also the pro-choices. They will all be discriminated against. Oh, I'm standing up for life. Life of babies, life of mothers, life of grandparents, life uh, for fathers too. Everybody is affected by abortion. It's just there is absolutely no um, limitations on this abortion bill. Women have no um, rights in it as far as um, counselling or um, times of uh, um, thinking about it and coming back for an abortion. And well, you're going to, the, the conscientious objection stuff is, is, is good that it's in it, but how is it going to be actually applied? Are they going to do it on the, the, the day before the shift, or are they going to have to register their, their conscientious objection when they get a job? How is this going to affect their, their employment you know, prospects and their career prospects? And you can say, interestingly, you can say the same about the other side of it. So you've got the situation where you have a pro-life pro manager and a pro-choice nurse, or vice versa. You know, because it's such a polarising issue, this is our concern. And our, our belief was that this legislation should have been held over until these practical on-the-ground issues were resolved. And then the effect on unborn um, girls is uh, incredible. Already um, in Victoria it's shown that baby girls are being aborted just because they're girls. Now, how can that be women's equality, women's rights? So, um, yeah, I'm passionate about this. And, uh, yeah, I believe by having a voice and praying, we can win this. The social changes in Queensland over the last 30 years are extraordinary. Growing up as a teenager in the 1980s in Queensland, I could never have foreshadowed a situation where I would find myself in the Queensland Parliament having to defend the rights of the unborn and also be debating whether true women's health was going to be maintained in this state in a balanced way. We need independent counselling for women who are considering termination of pregnancy. We need cooling off periods. We need clear and transparent conscientious objection rights in relation to health professionals. We need to stand up for Queenslanders. We need to stand up for the vulnerable in our state and we need to ensure that a balance is achieved when it comes to some of these contentious social issues. Do you know, a baby's brain can be actually detected at eight weeks. It's not just a fetus, this is a human being. I'm a medical doctor and I just wanted to discuss what this abortion bill is going to actually cause. Um, from a point of view, we're dealing with human life and life begins at conception and it ends at natural death. And life is really a continuum from that moment of conception to the moment we die, we change and we grow. And what this abortion bill is doing is it's basically, it's destroying life and it's killing and it's putting medical doctors in one of the worst possible positions where a doctor is supposed to be a person who protects life and looks after their patients. And what this abortion bill is doing, it's coercing them and it's making them be involved in a process in some manner, whether that be for referral or in whatever aspect. And it's actually taking away the rights of our doctors and it's taking away the safeguards that should go with a doctor-patient relationship. Well, in Queensland, as a member of parliament, as a specialist physician and as a father, I want to ensure that the rights of newborns are protected, that women get balanced and fair health care, which is free of conflicts of interest or perverse biases. I want a compassionate, just and fair society. 
And that's what we're talking about uh, next week before we have the vote in this parliament. What sort of society do we want? Do we want compassion? Do we want justice? Do we want fairness? Do we want equity? And do we want to protect the rights of the newborn whilst also looking after women's health? Uh, it's a situation I can't believe that in 2018 we've arrived at. Uh, Queensland deserves better, Queenslanders deserve better, women deserve better, the unborn deserves better, fathers deserve better, and so do families. Uh, and that's why I'm passionate in relation to my stance that I'll be voting no to the Palaszczuk Labor government's legislation next week. My name's Mark Robinson. I'm the state member for Ujuru in the Queensland Parliament, which is in the Cleveland uh, Bayside area. I'm here today uh, at Parliament House, just outside of the Parliament, with uh, a large crowd of people who have, have got concerns, are deeply concerned about these extreme abortion laws that Queensland doesn't need. Our laws are adequate, not perfect, and these laws are really terrible. These are laws are bad for women, they're bad for babies, and there's very little community support at all for them. Thousands at rallies, thousands of submissions into the parliament, um, thousands of emails being received by MPs around this state all saying these are bad laws, they are not the way forward. and. Um, you know, it, the vote is very close at the moment from what I can gather. Um, there's, there's no guarantees that the bill will pass. Uh, there's a number of people that, a um, number of MPs are really uh, very concerned and some being pressured, being intimidated and, and, and on, on this that shouldn't be the case. So uh, I'm, I'm praying and hoping that uh, this bill will go down uh, when it's uh, voted on in the parliament. Look, we've heard a lot over recent weeks about the conscience vote for um, politicians. They want to have a right to have their conscience on this, and this is because this is an issue of life and death. Well, I would say to them, that's all well and good, but what about the consciences of our doctors, of our medical staff, of our hospitals? Their rights to their conscience are actually being trampled with this bill. Well, when uh, conception takes place, that is the beginning. Uh, scientifically of an entity, a biological entity, which will uh, evolve into being a human being. Um, and so that's why there's a scientific basis to it, um, but there's also a philosophical basis to it as well. But there is a clear science uh, basis uh, to when conception takes place and that new entity starts to grow from very small beginnings uh, into what will become a, a human adult. Ladder, life, life, life! Life, life, life! Love them both. Love them both. Both lives matter. Both lives matter. Both lives matter. Life, life, life. Life, life, life. Life, life, life. Both lives matter. to 22 weeks but the government has ignored the people and are pushing ahead with the most extreme abortion laws in the country with no protections for women or unborn children this week our members of parliament will exercise their conscience vote they have been given a conscience vote because this is a life and death issue let me say that again the reason that there is a conscience vote is because this is seen as a life and death issue issue. Set before our politicians this week is a choice between life and death. And I would hold up this sign and say, oh, that they would choose life. Yeah. Yeah. Now, many of you know that I represent the Australian Christian Lobby. And so for me, it is the most natural thing in the world that I would pray. And I'm going to do that now. If you are a person of prayer, pray with me. If you are not, please just allow me to pray. Father, we just thank you for this building just to our, to our left or to our right here now where our laws are made, laws for evil or for good. And this week we pray, Father, that you will work against these evil laws. We pray that you will uphold life. We pray that you will strengthen the members of parliament who are wavering on this bill. We pray that you will speak to them and that you will convict them in their hearts that they should choose life this week. Amen. Thank you, Wendy. Isn't she wonderful?
we've got Dr. Christian Rowe now. So as I said, he's the member for Mogul. He's also a former president of the Australian Medical Association, the Queensland branch. So he's an exceptionally well placed. He's also a medical physician, a medical doctor. So he's perfectly placed to speak to us today. Thank you, Christian. Well, thanks very much, uh, Tishan. And ladies and gentlemen and friends, can I first of all thank you for coming out today. I know over the last uh, few weeks and months and even into last year, many of you here have made the commitment to come out on each and every occasion. I am grateful for that and many people are grateful for that right across uh, Queensland. To Tishan and to various organisations which have shown leadership on this issue, I thank them as well for their commitment and dedication that they continue to do on behalf of all of you. I want to speak to you today as a state member of parliament, as a specialist physician and also uh, as a father. I, like all of you, find the issue of abortion personally distressing and deeply confronting. But my comments today are going to relate to patient safety, appropriate clinical care and the compassionate, just and ethical society we should all want for Queensland, for women, for men, for children and future generations. From a health professional's perspective, this can be and is often a very complex and challenging issue. As a doctor, I have always upheld my duty of care and professional obligations to all patients facing such difficult and complex situations. And I have always done this to the best of my ability. As a specialist physician who treats or assists patients with a range of alcohol and or drug dependency conditions, you can all well imagine some of the difficult and complex clinical situations that I have seen, particularly with respect to unwanted pregnancies that have arisen via sexual assault, rape, incest and or criminal gang related violence. I will be voting no to the Palaszczuk Labor government's abortion legislation. This legislation ignores the rights of the unborn, is not in the true interests of women's health and the legislation does not afford adequate conscientious objection rights to both clinical and non-clinical staff. Important issues including mandatory counselling, cooling off periods and ensuring domestic violence coercion have been properly protected against, assessed for and dealt with have not been explicitly addressed within Labor's legislation. And with respect to my conscience and decision, I have also given careful consideration to the Liberal National Party's endorsed party policy position, the views of the broader Liberal National Party membership, the diverse view of constituents in the electorate of Mogul and the significant number of professional medical colleagues who have contacted me about this legislation and their concerns. Even before considering legislative reform to decriminalise abortion, strengthen safeguards and enhance checks and balances need to be in place to ensure due diligence and accountability with respect to women's health and their clinical care. To decriminalise and remove termination of pregnancy from the criminal code within the context of an already fundamentally flawed and loose clinical system without ensuring appropriate safeguards and proper checks and balance balances is an abdication of responsibility of any government to the welfare of its citizens and future generations. Thank you. The parliamentary committee process was farcical and flawed and the Queensland Law Reform Commission has not been independent or impartial in relation to its assessment and its recommendations. Shameful. There are also elements whereby Queensland Health Guidelines, which are in fact not mandatory standards, are being touted as de facto legislative safeguards within the Private Health Facilities Act. Now, as a parliamentarian, I know that I don't vote in a vacuum. This bill will allow for abortion for any reason to 22 weeks gestation and from 22 weeks to birth under a wide range of social possibilities. And in fact, 
Absolutely. Okay. And in fact, there are fewer than 160 words in this legislation that cover the circumstances of abortion beyond 22 weeks. Friends, today is an important day to remember, and it's very important to remember the words spoken to spoken today by all speakers and to truly hear them. This legislation is not pro-choice legislation. This legislation is pro-abortion legislation. But importantly, I want you to know this. The continual vilification of all of us by the fascist left can and will end with your assistance. Regardless of the outcome of the parliamentary vote next week, you must remember that elections matter. Yes. Who you put in to this parliament matters. Yes. Who you put into the Queensland parliament matters. Who you put into the Australian parliament matters. Yes. You must become even more politically active and always remain politically active. Yes. And each and every one of you has the capacity to make a change. Yes. And I ask, I plead with you to maintain your political activism yes. from this day forward forevermore. The current Palaszczuk Labor government is the most socialist left-wing government in the history of Queensland. We, are no, we know that they are owned and dominated by the unions. They are an irresponsible, debt-ridden government, a government of tax, debt and unemployment, a government that's failing on law and order, and a government that is pursuing a hard left-wing social agenda on multiple fronts. And ladies and gentlemen, they besmirched the names of some good Queenslanders and as a part of this debate, they have besmirched the name of the late Sir William Knox as well as many others in relation to their views uh, and their uh, contribution to Queensland going back uh, decades ago. I also want to say to you that sadly, the Australian Medical Association has endorsed the Palaszczuk Trad late term sex selection abortion bill. And what do you think about that? Absolutely outrageous. The AMA purports to care about refugees. In recent times, they've been talking about Manus and Nauru. But for those refugees that we're talking about today at the border of life, they have recklessly abandoned them. Well, many members of parliament will have more to say on this next week and in the weeks and months ahead, like-minded conservatives will continue to attack their leftist policy agenda. In concluding today, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you, the rights of the unborn matter. Real, real balanced and accountable health care for women is vitally important. Mothers matter, fathers matter, children's matter and families matter. And I want to thank the hundreds of Queenslanders who have written to me about this issue, who've taken the time to write, who've taken the time to send emails, who phoned up on the phone, and expressed their views and their concerns about this draconian legislation. I want you to know that many members of parliament will stand with you next week. They will be your voice. They will be the voice for the unborn and for women across this state. They will oppose this draconian legislation. I will stand with you, they will stand with you, they will choose life and I say to the Premier and to those Labor members who believe in true Labor values, it's not too late. There is an opportunity for you next week to stand with both women and the rights of the unborn in a much more fair and balanced manner than what is proposed. In fact, all members of Parliament have this opportunity next week. I'd encourage all members of Parliament to choose life, to stand up for the unborn, to really provide true and balanced protection for, women's, to stand, for women, to stand up for health professionals. And I thank you again for coming out this afternoon. Thank you. Um, I'm very nervous, sorry. Well, I just wanted to thank you for having me here today. Um, it's amazing to see how many people are here. 
So I'm here to share my personal story and to speak on behalf of the many whose stories echo mine. I don't stand here as someone in politics. I don't stand here as someone in religion. I stand here as someone who has been through abortion. Um, as it has been highly publicized, I was coerced into an abortion. Uh, the reason why it was publicized, it was because my ex-boyfriend played in the NRL. So, um, I was coerced into abortion through emotional and psychological blackmail. Um, so I found out I was pregnant at six weeks. And whilst I knew the timing wasn't ideal, um, I was actually still really excited. I had the thought of having a baby. As I always say, unplanned but not unwanted. However, moments after sharing the news with him, I was quite stunned at the heartlessness of his reaction, saying, well, you know what we're going to do. Uh, he told me instantly to abort or I would be facing this pregnancy alone. So over the next few weeks, I would be subjected to a really horrifying amount of domestic abuse and manipulation. And I had begged him to talk things through with me and to support me keeping the baby, but I was told things like, how could you ruin my life like this? Why would you bring a child into this world when it's unwanted by the father? And this child will haunt me. After weeks of enduring this and not knowing what to do, it ultimately led me to booking an abortion. As I was to eventually find out, domestic violence and abortion are very closely linked. And stories such as mine were more common than we would ever think. Since my story went public, I have been contacted by multiple women who aborted due to coercion. One man even telling his partner he would end his own life if she didn't abort. So when you are bombarded with that type of abuse, control and manipulation, you do become exhausted, scared, rejected. And for me personally, my thought processes were skewed. And I always reflect, and it can be quite scary to see how controlled and negatively influenced I was. And I'm a, I'm a pretty tough woman, but even the strong of us, strongest of us can be weakened. So I cannot imagine when abortion can be up until birth, the floodgates that will open. Um, I eventually called an abortion clinic and I was actually able to book an appointment instantly, no questions asked. I had heard that there was a possibility that if the counsellor at the clinic found you like unfit for abortion, you could not have one. So I felt that was a safeguard. Through lack of a better word, I somewhat looked forward to the session as I thought I would be able to talk things through with clarity. With her experience and expertise in the field, she would see this is not my decision and would turn me away. But I was very wrong. The counselling session lasted minutes and when I asked why, and when she asked why I wanted an abortion, I replied, because he said it's too early in our relationship, she said, well, that's a good reason to have one. And that was it. I was the only one fighting for this baby. And when this so-called expert was so casual about it all, I was very deflated. I felt defeated and I actually even felt like I was being dramatic. As I entered the abortion room and sat on the abortionist table, I was thinking to myself that I actually wanted to leave, but I felt too scared. The day I was there, there was actually a woman screaming in the waiting room and I woke up next to her. And then after the procedure, we were led to uh, recliners and I'll never forget the nurse just looking at her watch and it was like she just wanted us to get out. And that was it. Um, the counsellor made it more clear for me to take the antibiotics afterwards more than anything else. I was never told of the psychological risks, only the fact that, like I said, I may become unwell if I didn't take antibiotics, but honestly, that was it. Sorry. Two days after the abortion, when the morning sick sickness subsided and all the sleep was caught up on, the realization of that regret and grief slammed into me. And it was then that I realized that there is an incredibly dark side to abortion and how it is not the best choice 
so many of us are in misinformed into believing it is. And by the way, the domestic violence that this was supposed to free me from didn't stop either. As the months went on, I spiraled into depression and severe anxiety and contemplated taking my life on many occasions. And I, as I said in my interview with Channel 9, I wanted to be hit by a train. And so I would ask my mum to come pick up my daughter because I had planned to do that. I was very alone, I was very depressed. I would, I would rarely eat, I barely slept. But speaking of my daughter, she is actually the one thing that kept me here. I actually get more emotional speaking about her than anything else. So in 2010, I was pregnant. I was actually quite um, excited to be pregnant. And then I told my boss and he told me, I told him I was 14 weeks pregnant. And he told me that he thinks I can still get an abortion at 14 weeks. I was stunned. I was telling him some good news. And because I was pregnant, he fired me. Shame. Um, my partner left me. And the woman I was... Um, I actually had like this dream job. I was in an apartment, beachside apartment, was earning great money. So everything was really great at 24 years old. So my boss fired me. My friend I was living with told me that I was making the biggest mistake of my life and she wouldn't live with me anymore. And my partner left me. So I found myself moving back in with my parents. I um, was fired and I had to go on Centrelink because it turns out not many people are employing uh, seven month pregnant women and um, I was single and um, some may say and according to this bill that this is a good time to abort in fact the majority of people around me did except for two people and that was my parents And with the support of my mum and dad, I was actually able to bring my beautiful daughter, who's now seven, into this world. <laughs> On my daughter's recent report card, it actually ended with the fact that she is a phenomenal role model for all of her peers. She received an Academic Excellence Award last year at school, and she just we were just in Queensland last week for dancing finals to which her troupe are now the national champions. And in her first dance solo competition, she came first. Yeah. So that little girl that was supposed to ruin my life, she has made me a better person. When I was 24, all I would do is drink and party and live selfishly. And she taught me to grow up and she taught me this incredible unconditional love oh, I love that girl so much and it's actually her that inspires me every day she makes me want to be a better person there's so much talk about how children ruin your life so I say in this short time and with a countless things to say I leave you with this I've had an abortion I've actually had a miscarriage as well and I am a mother and choosing life positively changed mine. Ending life almost ended mine. Yes. Wow. My daughter is a prime example that with the right support, we can raise human beings who better this world. Yes. How did we get to this place? We can do better for women. Thank you. Thank you, Jaya. What a wonderful woman. Yeah, well done, Jaya. We have Dr. David Van Gen. Many of you will know him. Please, David, whenever you're ready. I'll let him introduce himself, actually. He's a far better speaker than me. <laughs> Let's have another battle cry in the middle. Ready? Life, life, life. Come on. Life, life, life. Life, life, life. life. Both lives matter. Both lives matter. Both lives matter. Come on. Thanks, David. <laughs>
Thanks, Titian. Friends, I can tell you that um, having sat in a traffic jam on Centenary for 40 minutes, this is the only place between Toowoomba and here that it isn't raining. That's good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this magnificent parliament over here is made of stone. It's meant to symbolise the solidity of the rule of law, built on the rock of justice. And what is the cornerstone of law? Well, the Select Committee on Medical Ethics in the UK put it this way. The prohibition of intentional killing is the cornerstone of law and social relationships, end quote. Yes. Yes. We in Queensland face a moment in our history where our government stands poised to shatter the cornerstone of law, which is the prohibition of intentional killing. But does that prohibition extend to the baby in the womb? Well, of course it always has. In our common law, we go back to the 1938 Born ruling by Justice uh, McNaughton. And he said, the law of the land has always held that human life is sacred. And the protection that the law extends to human life extends also to the unborn baby in the womb, he says. The life of the unborn baby in the womb must not be destroyed, says Justice McNaughton, unless it must for the preservation of the still more precious life of the mother, end quote. That has been the law of the land in Queensland to this very day. Of course, Queensland law allows for abortion in those tragic, extremely rare cases where it is necessary to save the mother's life. Of course it does. Of course we doctors will be part of that if circumstances force us. But we stand poised on the government of our state being prepared to desecrate the sanctity of human life, strip away the protection of law from those little hidden members of the family over on the dark side of the womb where we cannot see them and therefore the government wants to pretend they do not exist. That is the moment we face. And you remember that in the Queensland ruling, 1986, by Justice Maguire, he picked up the Born ruling and said, this is a humane doctrine for humanitarian purposes. It cannot be made the excuse for every inconvenient conception. End quote. That is what Labor proposes. Every inconvenient conception, up to 22 weeks, you can have your abortion, no questions asked, no medical reason whatsoever is required. They define that baby up to 22 weeks as nothing, zero, less value than you would give to any little mammal, a cat, a dog of the same age, the same size. And I promise you, if you did to that little kitten or puppy, what Doctors will be free to do in Queensland under Labor's law to babies in the womb. You would be sent to jail. So remember always the words of Justice Maguire at the end of the Queensland law, common law ruling, which still exists today. The law in this state has not abdicated its responsibility as guardian of the silent innocence of the unborn. So ladies and gentlemen, we are in uncharted waters. Never has our democracy, never has the Queensland society moved to destroy the cornerstone of law, moved to overturn the prohibition on intentional killing, moved to annul the sanctity of the life of the baby in the womb. 
And we have to look back in history to understand societies that have done this sort of moral movement. You remember Alexander Solzhenitsyn? He was sent to the Gulag in the Soviet Union by Stalin. And in his monumental documentation of that evil empire, he made this observation. Lying always comes before killing. Lying always comes before killing. We have had a, a horrible example of that in Queensland. Because the Labor government has used every power at its disposal to suppress the truth about the baby in the womb, to suppress the truth about what their bill will allow doctors to do to those babies. The truth, the truth has been suppressed. Let me give you a couple of examples from the submission that I sent on behalf of our doctors group just yet, to the Health Committee of Inquiry into the Termination of Pregnancy Bill 2018. And on the logo of our doctors group, we have this most beautiful drawing by Leonardo da Vinci. Who's heard of him? Is he a rabid alt-right fanatic? Okay, Leonardo da Vinci's beautiful picture of the baby in the womb is on our Letterhead alongside the name of our patron, the Honourable Dr John Heron, former Queen's Honorary Surgeon, former Minister in the Howard Government. The Labour Government censored that picture of Leonardo. They blacked it out at the top of the page. Then they blacked out a photo I had of my hand holding a little 13-week plastic model of a 13-week baby and alongside it I said, this is the model I show to excited parents when they reach 13 weeks. This is the age of our first baby when we saw his little profile on ultrasound where he rubbed his cheek and we recognised his profile then as now. Labour blacked that out. Why? Well, they'd said in their committee conditions that they would not accept images of fetuses. They would not accept images of fetuses or the results of medical procedures. Maybe they were thinking about horrible, ugly pictures. Leonardo da Vinci is not. He is a beautiful image of the baby, the humanity of the baby in the womb. This little model is not ugly. It's a beautiful image that gives joy to parents. Labour censored and blacked out those images because Lying comes before killing. And they had to destroy any suggestion of the humanity of these little brothers and sisters of ours. They had to destroy any powerful message to the health committee, to the MPs, to the public, that might somehow expose the inhumanity of what Labour is proposing to do. But it went far beyond that, the censorship and the blacking out wasn't just about images like they said it would be. They blacked out any words of truth in our submissions, not just mine, in Cherish Life's Australian Family Association, many more. For example, they blacked out the words from the ABC 730 report. That's public domain. It was broadcast on the 27th of October 1994 here in Brisbane. And it had the words, as I mentioned last rally, of Queensland's leading abortion doctor, David Grunman at the time, head of Planned Parenthood in Australia. And he had said on the 7.30 report what his method of choice was for abortions after 20 weeks, which is what this bill is all about. Highly relevant material for the committee. And they blacked it out where he said, his method of choice was, quote, essentially a breach delivery, where the fetus is delivered feet first. And then once the head is brought down into the cervical canal, it is decompressed with a puncturing instrument 
so that it therefore fits through the birth canal, end quote. I think that is relevant to our legislators to know what will happen under their law, what they are giving their blessing to and their funding to under the law they're making on our behalf. But no, they blacked it out. They blacked it out in the cherished life, submission and elsewhere. More incredibly, the Labor-controlled Health Committee of Inquiry even blacked out the words of their own parliamentary Hansard, where Mike Horan, who was the opposition health spokesman, as I mentioned last time, expressed his dismay about this practice that Dr Grunman had talked about and said, what will it mean, Mr Speaker, for the respectful, for, for the society, sorry, the conscience of society and its respect for law, if they are vividly aware of such brutality and they see their leaders do nothing about it. More importantly, said Mike Horan, what will it mean for all those defenceless babies who, unlike their peers in the hospital nurseries, will never feel a human touch except, and this was all blacked out, except that tight grip to their legs and that stab to their head, end quote. This is what Labor has done. You must suppress the truth about the humanity of the baby. One more extraordinary example. They blacked out words from the legislation of arguably the world's greatest legislative body, the United States Senate where it spoke of its ban on partial birth abortion, which, of course, is the technique that Dr. Grunman was describing. And the US Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act opens with the following. Congress finds and declares the following, that a moral, medical and ethical consensus exists, that the practice of performing a partial birth abortion, an abortion in which a physician delivers, and this is all blacked out, delivers an unborn child's body until only the head remains inside the womb, punctures the back of the child's skull with a sharp instrument, and sucks the brains out before complete delivery of the dead infant, and that's where the blackout ends, is a gruesome and inhumane procedure that is never, never medically necessary and should be prohibited. Our parliamentarians have censored every word of power that would challenge the conscience of good men and women in our parliament. They blacked it out. And as one last defiance of this censorship, of this regime of labour that seeks to dehumanise and deny the humanity of the baby, let me show you what was shown on the floor of the US Senate. The US Senate. The exact diagrams to help US Senators understand the significance of this proposal. Certified by a specialist in obstetrics as correct, if my glamorous assistant. <laughs> the first picture was this, and the words attached in the US Senate said, Guided by ultrasound, the abortionist grabs the, doc the baby's legs with forceps. Next picture. The baby's leg is pulled into the birth canal. Next picture. The abortionist delivers the baby's entire body, except for the head. Next picture. The abortionist jams scissors into the baby's skull. The scissors are then opened to enlarge the hole. And the last picture shown to the US senators was this. The scissors are removed and a suction catheter is inserted. The child's brains are sucked out. The baby is then evacuated. Sorry, Tisha. That, that, was shown on the floor of the US Senate because the censorship was not so great in America as the censorship is in Queensland under Labor. These are horrible images. 
because it is a horrible act which is going to be given its blessing by this horrible bill next week if it succeeds. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not know which way it will go. We have hope, we have confidence in the decency of men and women on both sides of this parliament. But if they allow themselves to go into this like blind, wise monkeys who see no evil and hear no evil and speak no evil and they drift towards legislation, then they have failed us, they have failed themselves and they have failed all future babies and the mothers. So, whichever way it goes, even if the worst happens, and the law in this state does abdicate its responsibility as guardian of the silent innocence of the unborn. Even if that happens, we are here, we will remain as the guardians of that silent innocence. And we will slowly replace those usurpers Take courage as a final thought from our friends in America who for 42 years have lived under a regime of unrestrained abortion on demand, which is so close to ours, unrestrained to 22 weeks. And then from there, no meaningful restraint. Let me show you one word of truth, one image of truth. This little baby, a model at 20 weeks, a precise model. This is the age at which Dr. Mark Hobart in Victoria was asked to do, arrange an abortion because the parents were having a girl and they didn't want a girl, they, they only wanted a boy. That's what's coming in Queensland. And under the Palaszczuk law, we GPs will be breaking the law if we refuse to collaborate in this baby's killing. And we will refuse. But... This is also the age at which that partial birth abortion technique, which has happened in the past in Queensland until, I suspect, public opinion got too strong. But it is open for this procedure to start happening again in Queensland, partial birth abortion. That is the age. This is almost the age of the baby that I've held a living baby at 22 weeks at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital. Little baby born terribly early. We, we tried, the specialist tried to save that baby, tried to intubate, intubate her, and it failed. And we told the mother in the adjacent room, and she asked a nurse to baptise that little baby, and she did. And we dressed her in those little gowns, that the volunteers knit for tiny, tiny premature babies like this. And we laid the little baby on the mother's breast and you could hear these little gasps and then, and then she went still. I put it to you, friends, that is the right way to treat a little baby like this. And Premier Palaszczuk, your way is not the right way. If we lose everything, remember the Vice President of the United States last year at their rally for life. 46 years into their dark times of abortion on demand. And he said, life is winning in America. He said, be assured that we, like you, will never grow weary. We will never rest until we restore a culture of life for us and our posterity. We will never lose hope and we will never forget, we will never forgive this matter until those usurpers who pose as our lawmakers but in fact shatter the foundation of law itself are replaced by men and women of justice who will treat the baby as 
as a true member of the human family. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Van Gan. That was excellent. I'm going to invite Cara Thomas to the stage. Cara is a well-known nurse at the Marta Hospital. Uh, she's in the operating theatre and her specialty is obstetrics. So, Cara, thank you so much for joining us. All right. Well, I don't know how you quite follow that, but welcome, everybody. And it is fantastic to be with you all here today. And we are all here because we know that this bill is bad for Queensland's most vulnerable and we're standing up to fight on their behalf. There is nothing in this extreme bill that acknowledges international best practice, scientific fact and personal experience. And if we are going to progress as a society, it should be built on science and empirical evidence, not on ideology. Yeah. Trad is right. It is not. 1899, but it is also not 1973. This bill does not reflect what has been learnt about the harms of abortion over the last few decades. And that is why we are here today fighting for the future best interests of Queensland women facing crisis pregnancy. We are here fighting for the biological truth of the humanity of the unborn. We are here fighting for the rights of Queensland medical professionals, like myself, to maintain their freedom to full conscientious objection. And we are here because we passionately believe we can do better than abortion on demand for basically any reason through all nine months of pregnancy. Now, as a health care professional, where is this bill's recognition of the pain capabilities of unborn fetal babies beyond 20 weeks, which has led to the outlawing of the dilation and extraction procedure as well as the partial birth abortions that have just been discussed. This law says termination of pregnancy in any way. And those ways have been blacked out by the committee, shielded from public eyes, shielding us from knowing what the truth is that they are fighting for. The truth is apparently too confronting for us, too confronting for the public to display, but liberating to practice. This is paternalistic protectionism and it has no place in a free, democratic civil society. They need to tell us the truth and let the people decide. Furthermore, where is the recognition of the well-documented harms of abortion on women, which has led to the US legislating the Women's Right to Know Act, which ensures they are fully informed with the truth, that they understand the development of their unborn child, that they hear the heartbeat, that they get to see it on a sonography, that they understand the method of abortion, that they understand the physical and the psychological risks of abortion so that we don't have stories like Jaya's story, that they have independent counselling and cooling off periods as well as provided with support services and alternatives such as adoption. The women of Queensland have a right to know the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth because they have to live with their decisions. And what, where is the recognition in this bill of the human rights of the medical professionals in this country, the ones that work in obstetrics, the midwives, the doctors, the allied health professionals, the neonatal staff, where is their right to conscientiously object to participate in the ending of innocent human life without the threat of retribution such as the loss of a job or deregistration or disciplinary action because you won't refer for a sex selection abortion. This issue is bigger than hashtags and it's bigger than slogans. The LNP have a conscience vote because this bill is life and death matter. That's why they get a, conscien a conscience vote. That is the magnitude of the bill that is being considered. Lives are literally on the line. And I am here today, and you are here today, 
because we, the people of Queensland, want the best policy based on the best evidence to deliver the best outcomes for our society. That's right, you tell them. This bill is not the best our representatives can do. It is actually extremely bad, Trad. Thank you all for your passion, for fighting for the rights of the most vulnerable in society. We really can do better in a modern, civil, scientific society than this bill. We can do so much, so much better for women, for the unborn, for medical professionals, for our culture than this bad trad bill. Thank you. Thanks, Cara. That was excellent. I'm going to talk a bit about Victoria. This bill, the Termination of Pregnancy Bill, is actually modelled on the Victorian Abortion Reform Act 2008. This bill is pretty much identical, except they have a 24-week on request um, gestational limit. It's an effective limit, ineffective, and we have the 22, but exactly the same. Everything else is exactly the same. Then abortion to birth based on wide criteria, including social reasons, that very ambiguous thing. Um, and ours is exactly the same. The lack of conscientious, full conscientious objection for doctors, the lack of safeguards for women, uh, effectively legalising sex selective abortion, which this government is actually denying is happening. Um, I met with a Labor MP who I've been trying to work with about uh, helping that person arrive to the conclusion that this is our barbaric law. Um, they just let me know last week, and I know other people have been working with them because they, they do profess to be Christian and you know have life sympathies, but they, although they told me they have really big concerns about this bill, they will actually be doing what, they, what they're told and voting with the bill. They say they go to mass every day, they're voting with the bill. It's very scary. This is so-called conscience vote. Um, I was told in good authority from a, a, a Labor person that the Deputy Premier had actually offered um, two people cabinet positions in the next term of government if they supported the bill. There is a huge amount of manipulation, abuse and fear to get this bill through and it's just not okay. We say no. There's about three people in government pushing it. Obviously, the Deputy Premier, she has said on record, it is personal for her, she said in the media, it is the reason I entered politics over 20 years ago, for this reason. This is our Treasurer and our Deputy Premier is here to, you know, legalise abortion to birth. That is scary. Because the, this is, I'm talking about the Labor Party now. The Labor Party, as you know, is split into two factions, the right faction, which is known as Forum, and the left faction. The left faction, for the first time, for a long time, or possibly ever, has the numbers. They're the dominant faction. Now, Jackie Trout is the head of the left faction. So she is kind of lauding it, it would seem, over the rest of the government and instilling fear. You know, I suspect this person who would call themselves a Christian who said they're going to support this extreme bill, even though they personally have some concerns whether they're going to support it, um, has probably been told they will be disendorsed at the pre-selection and they're going to lose their job. So they're choosing to uh, vote to kill babies up to full term rather than lose their job. This is scary. This is a scary day. Yeah, I know. It's bad. So what can we do? We keep the pressure on right until the end. On Monday, we ring every one of us here and get five of our friends, if we can, to ring our state MP's office. If they said they're voting against the bill, say, I wanted to say thank you. If they said they're voting for the bill, say, look, it's not too late to change your mind. I will support you. If you make it through to election time, well, I'm saying, I've, yeah, I will, I would say this. I will support you. If you make it through to election, if you survive pre-selection, if they're a Labor MP, I will help you to hold your seat at the election. We are bipartisan, cherish life, but we're pro-life. This is the issue we vote on, life. Whichever party goes for life, whichever party protects life, we support that party. We support those candidates, whether they're LNP, Cata, Labor. We must support candidates who support life. <laughs> Similarly, at election time, we cannot be complacent. We must, whoever votes for this, whether this goes through or not, Next election, I know Cherish Life, I'm the, I'm the Executive Director of Cherish Life, I will be going after them. We will be doing everything we can to get rid of these people at next election.
whoever votes that it's okay, it's a woman's choice to kill up until birth, that's the only choice we're going to give her. They're not pro-choice, they're pro-abortion. They don't offer any other choice. Whoever says that's okay doesn't deserve to be in government. The first rule of government is to protect. So let's look at Victoria, which is this, this bill, this repugnant bill is modelled on. So when uh, the, the Victorian legislation got passed in 2008, um, the on average rate of late-term abortions increased by 40%, year-on-year -year average. 40% increase in late-term abortions. About 50% of those were performed on healthy babies to healthy mothers for what is known as psychosocial reasons. These are the laws these people are trying to replicate. Healthy babies, healthy mums. In 2011, that meant a 37 plus weaker range, so a full-term baby, was aborted for psychosocial reasons. Healthy baby to a healthy mother, legally. Government sanctioned killing to term in Victoria, and they want to do it here. The same year, 2011, 10 babies aged between 28 and 31 weeks were aborted for psychosocial reasons. On average, it's led to an increase of, um, as I said, 40%. Um, and we, we don't want that here. We, we really don't. <laughs> it's looking hard with the numbers. We're getting people, as I said, who say call themselves Christian, who go to church and who say they're going to vote with the government. It's, it's looking impossible, but I believe we can get a miracle. We'll keep pushing. We'll keep pushing. Life is worth fighting for. We will push until the end. But if it goes the wrong way, we will push and we will push. And they will be sorry they ever did this to the unborn. <laughs> On the health committee process, as David Van Gen said, a lot of us were censored. I was told that, you know, uh, in Victoria, decriminalising abortions actually led to an, a decrease in abortion. They said, what do you think about that? I said, well, actually, in our report, as in, if you cared to read it, you would see there's actually been an increase. I didn't actually say if you cared to read it. So there was a, a it felt like they were going through the motions, a predetermined outcome. As David said, the Queensland Law Reform Commission, uh, the pro <laughs> that there's problems right along the path. But the, the thing is, the Attorney General gave the directive to the Queensland Law Reform Commission to decriminalise abortion, not what is best for Queensland health, what is best for Queensland women, but decriminalise abortion. But uh, the way abortion stands is already lawful under a wide range of criteria because of 1986 case law that David was referring to. So we have around 14,000 abortions in Queensland every year. There's already 14,000 little babies who every week are aborted predominantly for social reasons. About 2% of those, if it's similar data to Victoria, actually have a, a health reason, a fetal abnormality. I'm not saying that's right. It's just not at all. I'm just, that's the statistic or the mothers in, in some type of serious health risk. But 98% of these are healthy. But they, if they remove all restriction on abortion, of course we're going to see a jump. It's, it's counterintuitive. The, the abortion lobby say, Oh, you know, women have, um, there's impediments to abortion, even though that's not true for the most part, I believe. Um, and I can talk about that later. But they're saying, but then they're saying, oh, you know, if we remove impediments, suddenly abortion rates will go down. They have this counterintuitive argument. They're trying to tell MPs that if abortion's decriminalised, rates will go down. Well, we know that's not the truth in Victoria when we look at late-term abortion. And we know um, it's counterintuitive argument. Uh, a lot of people, they're doing a lot of surveys which says, do you agree abortion should be decriminalised? And they don't tell people what the law actually is. Just that word uh, criminalise actually trips people up. They're like, no, of course women shouldn't be treated like criminals. Well, they're not under the current law. No woman has ever been convicted under, under the current law, nor can she be because of 1986 case law. And also, if she is trying to sue her doctor for a botched abortion, she will be the crown witness against the doctor and um, she will have protection. So... There's, in terms of accessibility, uh, we already do have a lot of abortions here, so no one can say this law needs, quote unquote, needs to pass so women can get an abortion. Um, in, in Victoria, under this, the comparable laws, uh, we have seen Dr. Mark Hobart, an ethical GP, who was asked, um, he, a couple went to him at 19 weeks pregnant, and they found out it was a girl, and they said, well, we want you to refer us for abortion. He said, absolutely not. And he went, had, to go, had to face disciplinary action because the government enforces people's right to abortion, but also sex-selective abortion. So discriminating against girls. And the, the irony is Jackie Trad says this is a pro-woman bill. 
she's doing this for women, apparently. She wants to leave this legacy for women. First of all, it's going to kill women. A lot of, at least half of the babies aborted will be women, but then there'll be even more women because sex selective abortion will be legalised and we know that happens. Um, around the world, there's about 100 million missing girls. But also, I'm a woman. I certainly don't want this. It horrifies me. It's absolutely hideous. I mean, we've done polling and only 6% of people actually agree with abortion to birth. Only 6%. She's in this minority. And then um, of, that, of that group, only 3% of women. So she's in this 3% of women. And it, it feels like the whole government has been manipulated by this agenda to bring in extreme abortion laws. It's very concerning. So keep speaking, keep fighting. We, we speak the truth and love. I'm a bit more feisty today than usual because I'm sick of this rubbish. But... <laughs> Please be a part of the conversation. I would encourage you all to join a political party. I'm not, I'm hopefully I'm speaking to a premier here. I'd love a beautiful pro-life premier. Please, one of you step up to the mark, try to be premier one day, that would be great. But be, be in a political party, be part of the conversation. Um, help your MP um, at election time if they are pro-life. But if they're pro-abortion, get rid of them. Work on the other side, get rid of them. So we don't have to go through this every free couple of years. Worst case scenario, and I'm working and hoping and praying for a miracle. Worst case scenario, if this does go through, we will work so hard to do what we can to soften it, and we will work so hard to get rid of whoever votes for it at next election and put in some laws that protect the unborn and women. Yeah. So please call your MP on Monday. Please email them. I know uh, ACL have a great online facility set up, so you can get on their website with some automatic emails already set up. And please also, um, loud, lowd.com.au has a weird survey saying, do you, do you agree with decriminalisation? So, of course, they've got a majority. Yes. So, if you want to get on there and click no, that would be great. Um, but fear not, we're going to be out here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning from 7.30am. We're not letting get away with this. We're going to have a peaceful presence with our signs. Um, they'll be voting in, in on here um, Tuesday or Wednesday. We're going to be here. We're going to be having a presence for the unborn. We will never forget. We will never give up the fight for life. We speak the truth, but we speak. We speak in love. Yeah, come on. Bless you all. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Safe journey. What do you think is going to happen uh, this week? What are the numbers looking like on Labor, Labor side? Are there many people going to vote with a, uh, a sensitive conscience or a seared conscience? A lot of people, we don't know yet. We yeah. think they'll be, um, it'll be tight, very, very tight. We're still working the numbers. Yeah, it's going to be tight. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. If there's anybody who still wants to know what they can do, yes. what should they be doing at, at this Email stage? Email and phone call. Phone call on Monday to the electorate office. Perfect. Well, that's it from the Queensland Parliament House Speaker's Corner, where we've had, I reckon there's at least a thousand people here, it's a bit hard to tell. So many people have come out, even with the really bad weather, because we care about Queensland, we care about justice, we care about defending the innocent. If you're a Queensland resident, please take this opportunity, if you haven't already, contact your local member, make your voice heard. Let them know that if they want to represent at the next election, they need to vote no to this uh, bad legislation by Jackie Trad right now, and they need to vote for life, they need to vote for justice, they need to vote to defend the innocent. And uh, make sure you contact your local member and let them know this is an election issue. Nothing else is important when we're killing our own citizens. Thanks heaps, and uh, God bless.